Hi, today we're reading from Upside Down Magic by Sarah Milanowski, Lauren Miracle, and Emily Jenkins. We're reading chapter 17, which begins on page 184. Chapter 17. Principal Gonzalez pulled a blue leather leash from his pocket. He walked over and fastened it onto Andre's belt and unlooped rope backs. He handed the leash to Nori and rope backs back to Willa. Take backs to Nurse Riley. He'll know what to do. The principal paused. I wouldn't watch, though, if I were you. Willa hurried off. Lacey, eyes on the ground, crept behind her like a crab, hoping not to be noticed. Ch Principal Gonzalez said, holding up one finger. Not so fast, Lacey Clunch. Lacey slumped. Then she turned around. She pasted on a smile and said, I'm so glad Andres is safe. I mean, Elliot. The way he iced that leash and broke it, upside down magic is really dangerous. She blinked innocently. Not to be mean, I'm just saying. The principal frowned. Let's talk about you, Lacey. Do you think it was clever to set fire to someone's leash? No, sir. I know it was unsupervised flaring, but it was an accident. My control isn't good at all. You can ask my teacher. We used the fire extinguishers four times because of me just last week. Gonzalez raised his eyebrows. It was a mistake, I swear, continued Lacey. I didn't flare his leash on purpose. Hmm, Principal Gonzalez said. You are lucky that the UDM class acted so quickly and so creatively. He regarded her. Otherwise, he might have died. Do you understand? Lacey's face dreamed of color. Yes, sir. All right, now let's talk about your manners. Would you like being mocked for your glasses or for anything else that separates you from others? Lacey swallowed and shook her head. I did not think so. I have to wear them, Lacey said. They're prescription. I will not tolerate bigotry, said Principal Gonzalez. I will not tolerate unkindness about race, gender, orientation, family background, religion, weight, magical abilities, favorite candy, or anything else that distinguishes one person from another. Not here at Dunwoodle Magic School. It was an accident, whispered Lacey. Possibly what you did was an accident, but what you said to Elliot and his UDM classmates was most certainly a choice. We can discuss it more in my office. Xenia and Rune are there now. Please go and join them. When Lacey was gone, Principal Gonzalez sent the UDM class back to Miss Starr's room. Everyone except Nori and Elliot. You can guess what I've got to say, can't you? Principal Gonzalez said to Nori and Elliot once the others were gone. Shame clogged Nori's throat. Then pride swelled her. Then shame. Then pride. Her different magic had been on display for everyone to see. A giant Nori-faced bluebird. She would never live it down. But she had saved Andres. It was horrible. It was great. I think you're going to say that we did a very good thing today, Elliot said, and that you're glad because we saved Andres. But we'll have to work extra hard not to let our wonky magic take over again. Principal Gonzalez tilted his head. Is that truly your prediction? If we study the box of normal book, we'll get better, Elliot said doggedly, especially, you know, since we'll be in a normal class. Nothing like this will happen again, Miss, Mr. Gonzalez, I promise. The principal's eyes were very dark and very kind. Nori, Elliot, you belong in Miss Starr's class. What? Elliot said. Both of us? His breath hitched. It was just one small bit of ice to save Andres. Magic like yours needs the right kind of training, Gonzalez said. What happened with Andres has helped me realize what I probably knew all along. He pursed his lips. You won't get proper training in a regular cla f flare class, Elliot, and you won't get it in a fluxer class either, Nori. I don't know how you did what you did, but I am quite sure that Miss Starr's teaching played a role. Do you agree? Nori nodded. Miss Starr's teaching had definitely played a role. 
Principal Gonzalez escorted them across the lawn. That's my verdict, then. The upside-down magic class is where you belong. Elliot looked stricken. But my decision is final, Principal Gonzalez said. He disappeared all at once with a slight popping sound. Nori and Elliot sat together on the lawn. Elliot was sulking. Nori was thinking. She wouldn't be moving to the regular Fluxer class. That meant she would never test again for Sage Academy, and that meant she wouldn't be going home. Disappointment washed over her. Could she find a bright side? She decided to compliment Elliot. At least she could help him feel better about himself. What you did was really important magic, she said, turning the leash to ice. Who else but you could have done that? He snorted. No one but Elliot the upside down flare. Nori bit her lower lip. I have a small secret to tell you. Being an enormous bird girl was actually kind of amazing. Really? Really, it was. It felt powerful. For a moment, Elliot showed no reaction. Then he smiled and said, The ice magic felt pretty good, too. He plucked a piece of grass. But the Sparkies are never going to talk to me again. Nori made a face. And that's a problem because... Elliot squinted at her, and then he laughed. The big, snorty laugh that had first made Nori like him. I guess it's not a problem, huh? They're the problem, Nori said. You're right. I should freeze their pillows. Or their underwear. They laughed together. A flash of movement caught Nori's eyes. It was Marigold running across the field. She stopped in front of them and rested her hands on her legs, breathing hard. She grinned. Miss Starr said to get to class, please. She got ice cream cups from the cafeteria and she's not going to make us do geography today. And Bax is back in human shape. Elliot stood. He pulled Nori up too. Come on, he said. Are you sure, she asked him. Elliot nodded. I'm sure. If there's ice cream, I'm in. And that's the end of chapter 17.